my queen and my mother, I give myself to you. And to show my devotion to you, I consecrate to you this day, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, my entire self without reserve. Wherefore, good mother, as I am thy own, keep me and guard me as thy property and thy possession. Amen. Hello, and welcome to the Heart of Fiat Crucified Love. Today is August 22nd, which is the Feast of Voila, um, the Queenship of Mary, right? And I did this icon yesterday um, of Our Lady as a Queen. And she's queen because of the sorrows of her heart that unite her perfectly to Jesus. And then they're all resurrected. So if you like the icon, you can buy it on my art shop. Um, so I thought we would start with me singing Hail Holy Queen um, because she is our queen. And after I do that with you and we say a prayer, then um, I will rearrange some things and continue on with you. So, uh, let's see if I can fit here, right? Okay, oopsie, my arm doesn't. Let's see, there we go. I don't wanna block my sweet lady from you, right? Scoot up here, that's what happens when you record podcasts on the floor. <laughs>
appeared in the sky and a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and on her head, a crown of 12 stars. And she was with child and she wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth, right? The pain of her heart. Then another sign appeared in the sky, and it was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems, and its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour the woman to devour her child when she gave birth. And she gave birth to a son, a male son, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. And the woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God that there she might be taken care of for 1260 days. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Radusia Maria, blagadati polnaya gaspot staboya, blagoslavienna tim jeszcze żonami, i blagoslavien plotsareva twajewo isu. Svetaya Maria, Mater Boja, Malisa nas grešni, nini i v čas smirti naši, amen. Zdrovaš Maria, vaski pevna, pan s tabom, bogoslavionaš ti njenze nevestami i bogoslavione ovoc života tvojego Jezus. Šventa Maria, Matka Boža, murše za nami křešnemi, teraz i v godine i šmirti naši, amen. Dios te salve Maria, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita tu eres entre todas las mujeres, y bendito es el fruto de vientre Jesús. Santa Maria, Madre de Dios, rega por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Alleluia. I'll be right back. Hello. <laughs> I'm back. Um, I wanted to put a few more images of Our Lady as queen around me. I don't think you can see the ones way up top, but that's okay. Um, and I turned the light on behind me because it might get dark as I'm speaking. It's like seven o'clock, 7.25. Um, so I, I hope that this works out visually for y'all. <laughs> um, and I have Our Lady of Mount Carmel, but she has that beautiful crown on her head. And I chose this statue when I wanted a Mary statue for like my bedroom years and years and years ago. Um, I chose her because she's so silent and prayerful. And actually I have two of these and both have been smashed to pieces at times. It's very interesting. But I was able to put this one back together and um, pray with it. 
And my dad um, helped me really plaster the other one back together and I repainted it and just gave it to my parents. Um, and then we have Our Lady is the Queen that I painted um, this weekend because it was um, her feast day, right? And I have Our Lady of La Salette, which she appeared weeping, but dressed like as a queen. And on her crown, it's like roses and crown. And I loved that. So I tried to recreate it in a different way on this image where she is not crying. Although in both, you see, she has an image of Jesus crucified on her heart, right? And then I went ahead and popped, this is probably one of my favorite icons I've ever done, this Our Lady of Sorrows. Um, but you know, Our Lady is queen because she suffered. Um, it's through her suffering that she is one with Christ our King who wore a crown of thorns on his head um, and who went through terrible agony as our king. You know, a king is not supposed to, nor a queen, to assert authority um, like a power-hungry, you know, power-monger. <laughs> um, to be a king or to be a queen is to be a servant, right? And Our Lady's queenship was first seen, um, first of all, when she said yes to God. Because a king and a queen are supposed to say yes to God and then go on and take care of the people entrusted to them, right? But then when she traveled to Elizabeth and she went to serve and she prayed a Magnificat glorifying God, right? Um, and her whole life she continued to reign as a queen. You know, in Cana, she went to Jesus the king and said, they, you know, they have no wine. And he listened to her supplication. And at the foot of the cross, she stood there with seven sorrowful swords in her heart, right? And, you know, kings and queens, they always, you know, have knights around them and like swords. That's something you think of like royalty. But my favorite quote from Pope John Paul II was that Mary, you know, didn't win a battle with a sword in her hand but with seven swords in her heart, right? Um, and, you know, in the, in the presentation in the temple, Simeon said to her, you know, you yourself, a sword shall pierce so the thoughts of many would be revealed, right? She was willing to take that sword upon herself so that she could free us. So, you know, she is a queen who reigns in great beauty, and you can see her beauty, you know, behind me here, and you can see it next to me, right? And you can definitely see it in her statue here. But her beauty comes from a heart nailed one with Jesus' divine love in his sacred heart, right? So the immaculate and the sorrowful heart of Mary come together and make her queen. And she's the queen of martyrs, and she's the queen of confessors. She's a queen of peace. She's a queen of saints. She's a queen of families. She's a queen of so many different titles. And that's what we're going to do in this program is I want to go over a bunch of titles of Mary. So we already read that passage in scripture about um, where in Revelation it talks about her being this queen, right, who reigns. And right here at the beginning, before I get into the titles of Our Lady and a few quotes from the saints, I wanted to read a short excerpt from The Mystical City of God from Venerable Mary of Agrida. Just powerful, powerful work. But there's a whole, um, volume four is all about the coronation of Mary, right? And I didn't even know where to start because I haven't read it. This is one of the few works I haven't read cover to cover. So I just prayed this morning for where I should read from. And I opened to this and I thought it was very beautiful. Um, and so, it's talking about receiving communion. 
The other apostles and disciples communicated at the hands of St. Peter. Then the most blessed Mary taking the last place, many angels descended to the cenacle. All those present saw them, and at the time of the consecration, the cenacle was filled with a wonderful light and fragrance through which the Lord wrought wonderful effects in their souls. Having celebrated the first mass, they agreed upon certain hours in which they were to persevere together in prayer as far as they could without neglecting the necessary ministry of souls. The great lady retired to a place where she remained alone and motionless for those 10 days without eating or speaking to anyone. So this is when they're waiting for the Holy Spirit. During that time, she experienced such hidden mysteries as to move the angels to astonishment. And I find myself unable to describe what has been manifested to me concerning them. I will briefly indicate a small part of these mysteries, for to state it all is impossible. The Heavenly Mother, having received communion on the first of the ten days, and retired to pray alone at the command of the Lord was immediately raised up by her angels and others there present to the Empyrean heavens. Since she was taken up body and soul, one of the angels took her shape in order that the apostles in the cenacle might not become aware of her absence. They bore her up with the splendor and magnificence described by me on other occasions. And on this occasion, it was even greater on the account of the designs of the Lord. When Mary arrived in a region of air far removed from earth, the Almighty Lord commanded Lucifer and all his hellish hosts to come into the presence of the queen into those higher regions. Immediately, all of them came before her and saw them and knew them all just as they were and the condition that they were in. The sight was something painful to her because the demons are so abominable and disgusting. But she was armed with divine virtue so that she could not be harmed by this horrible and exasperable sight. Not so the demons. For the Lord gave them to understand by a special insight the greatness and superiority of that woman whom they were persecuting as their enemy. They were made to perceive how foolishly presumptuous they had been about their attempts against her. To their still greater terror, they saw that she carried in her bosom the sacramental Christ and that the whole divinity held her as it were enveloped in its omnipotence for their humiliation, overthrow, and destruction. Why do I think the Lord led me to this? Because like that um, passage from Revelation, celebrating the queenship of Mary is celebrating her crushing the head of Satan, right? And all the way back in Genesis, when Eve and Adam sinned, what did God say to Eve? That, you know, the serpent would, would be at her heel, but she would strike him, right? And Our Lady crushes the head of Satan, but she does it through holiness, not through violence, not through presumption, not through power. It's through littleness and humility and prayerful love. The demons, moreover, heard a voice proceeding from the deity itself saying, with this shield of my powerful arm, invincible and strong, I shall always defend my church. This woman shall crush the head of the ancient serpent. It's from Genesis 3.15. And shall forever triumph over its haughty pride for the glory of my holy name. All these and other mysteries of the most holy Mary the demons perceived and understood while they were gathered around her in dismay. So great was their despair and crushing pain that they felt that they with loudest clamor said, may the power of the Almighty cast us immediately into hell and let it not keep us in the presence of this woman who torments us more than the fire. O invincible and strong woman, 
recede from us since we ourselves cannot fly from the presence where we are bound by the chains of the Almighty. Why dost thou also torment us before our time? Thou alone of all human nature art the instrument of the omnipotent against us, and through thee men can acquire the eternal blessings that we have lost. Did you hear that? Through Mary, we can acquire all the eternal, eternal, forever, ever, ever, and ever, and ever, eternal blessings that the demons eternally lost. And this power I'm talking about that comes through her holiness, we as her subjects, we as her children, um, can partake in. You know, when we hide under her mantle, when we surround ourselves with holy images like this of her, but more than that, when we allow our hearts to imitate her in total genuine humility, genuine, authentic holiness and love, right? Like you can pull off holiness to anyone. The whole world can think somebody's holy, but God knows truth, you know? And that's why I always pray more than anything else. All I want is to authentically be holy before the sight of God, not man. I mean, what a, what's man going to do, right? They're all mortal. But I can partake in that by being one, to, by truly, you know, enwrapping myself with the heart, immaculate and sorrowful heart of Mary, hiding in her heart, right? Hiding in her heart. So the demons continue. Those that have sunk into the despair of ever seeing God eternally are now rewarded for the accredited good works of their Redeemer by the vision of thee, which in our hate is to us a torment and chastisement. So people even condemned to hell, not because God's mean, but because they've chosen a life full of vice. And when they look at God, they fear him the way the demons fear Mary. And they say, I would rather be in hell than be with someone so beautiful and holy, right? Those souls can still be saved by Our Lady, Our Queen. There is a testimony of a priest who got killed in a car accident and he was condemned to hell for being a priest that was selfish, that only thought about himself, that only thought about secular things or being popular or, you know, it wasn't about, you know, taking the souls of his sheep into true holiness. And right before he got condemned to hell, he heard a voice, a female voice, which was Our Lady. It said, son, give him to me and I will save his soul. And he did. Jesus gave him to Mary and he came back to life and he lived for her and he became holy. We hope, right? The demons continued, release us, almighty Lord and God. Let this new punishment in which thou renewest that of our fall from heaven cease. And the punishment was being in the presence of Mary. For in it thou ex executest the punishment thou hast threatened us with in this wonder of thy powerful arms. During these and other lamentations of despair, the demons were held spellbound in the presence of the queen for a long time. And although they made, thy made the most violent efforts to fly, they were not permitted to do it as fast as their fury urged them on in order that the terror of the Most Holy Mary might strike them so much the deeper and become the more notorious, the Lord ordained that she herself should use her authority as mistress and queen in permitting them to leave. But think about how we're protected from evil just by being in the presence of Mary. At the instant in which she did this, all of them cast themselves with all the swiftness in their power from the upper regions into the abyss. They gave forth dreadful howls, terrorizing all the damned souls with new punishments and full of dismay and torments in not being able to deny their defeat. They proclaimed in their presence the power of the Almighty and of his Holy Mother, having won this triumph 
the most serene empress proceeded on her way to the Empyrean heaven, where she was received with new and admirable jubilee, remaining there for 24 hours. She prostrated herself before the throne of the most blessed Trinity and adored it in the unity of its undivided nature and majesty. She prayed for the church in order that the apostles might understand and resolve what was proper for the establishment of the evangelical law and the termination of the law of Mo Moses. In answer to these petitions, she heard a voice from the throne by which the three divine persons, one after the other and each one for himself, promised to assist the apostles and disciples in declaring and establishing the divine truth, assuring her that the Father would direct its establishment by his omnipotence, the Son as head of the church, assisted by his wisdom, and the Holy Ghost as its spouse by his love and his enlightening gifts. Then the Heavenly Mother saw that the most holy humanity of her Son presented to the Father the prayers and petitions which she herself had offered for the church, and how approving of them, he proposed the reasons why they should be fulfilled in order that the faith of the gospel and his entire holy law might be established in the world in accordance with the decrees of the divine will and mind. It's so beautiful to see the connection between you know, Peter and the hierarchy of the church and Our Lady. And to know when you pray, she is our queen, is interceding for you here at the throne of God. And Jesus hears her prayers and intercedes as the king before the Father's throne. That's what happens when you pray. Have you ever thought of your the, the reality of what's going on? It's what I'm reading. Immediately in execution of this will and proposal of Christ our Savior. So Christ proposed that God answer the prayer of the church and the needs of the church, right? That's us. We're the church. The lady saw issuing forth from the divinity an immutable essence of God, the form of a temple or church, beautiful, clear, and resplendent, as if built of diamond or sparkling crystal, adorned with many enamels and reliefs to enhance its beauty. The angels and saints saw it and in astonishment exclaimed, Holy, holy, holy and powerful art thou, Lord, in thy holy works. This church or temple, the most blessed trinity, placed in the hands of the most holy humanity of Christ and in a manner which cannot be described in words, he united it with himself. Thereupon, he turned it over to the Most Holy Mother, our Queen, the Queen of the Church. And as soon as Mary received it, she was filled with new splendor. She annihilated herself within herself and then saw the divinity clearly and, the in and intuitively by eminent and beatific vision. The great queen remained in this joy for many hours, truly introduced into the cellar of fermented wine spoken of in the Song of Songs. Since what she experienced and received there surpasses all created thought or capacity, it suffices here to say that a new was ordered in her love and directed with new fervor toward the church consigned to her under the above symbol. Enriched by these favors, Mary was borne back by the angels to the cenacle, having in her hands the mystical temple she had received from her divine son during that prayer, right? She remained in prayer during the other nine days without motion and without interrupting the acts in which she had been left by the beatific vision. It's just really beautiful. That's what we're celebrating this weekend. That's what we celebrate on August 22nd is the queenship of Mary, right? The queenship of Mary. And here she's perfectly united to that sorrowful heart of Jesus. And it's through that that he was able to place the church in her hands, 
right? So she, she became our queen when she became our mother. And that was especially at the foot of the cross, right? I mean, she was our mother from the first moments of Jesus's conception within her because we are part of the mystical body of Christ, right? And his body came to live in her. But she was given in a more particular way at the foot of the cross when Jesus took John and said, John, this is your mother, you know, mother, be woman, behold your son. And that's where she became queen, truly queen. But it's very beautiful. Therese of Lisieux actually wrote about this in uh, the final writings that she had. Where was it I found? The Last Confidences, right? And uh, Therese of Lisieux said, Mary then is queen, but she's queen in the way of a mother, serving all her children, guiding them in their most personal and intimate life, not so much by law and precept as by kindly prompting and persuasion, with an affectionate smile on her countenance as she goes about bestowing a mother's tender care on all her children, on the lowliness, lowliest no less than on the more fortunate. In fact, the more humble and lowly her children are, the more of a mother she is to them. And the more we put ourselves in Mary's guiding care, the more quickly she leads us up to God. In union with Christ, Mary guides the entire church militant. That's us. We're called the church militant because we're still on earth and we're fighting, right? On the road to the city of God, that's in heaven, that heavenly Jerusalem is the city of God. But Mary's rule is marked above all by the supreme grace of her motherhood. She rules and directs souls with the power of a mother's smile and the irresistible attraction of a mother's sweetness. With a mother's intuition, she is ever alert one might say, to yield to the supremely sovereign and kingly action of her son, keeping herself in the background. For even in her own sovereign rule over the universe, Mary is more of a mother than a queen. See, she is a queen that reigns through being a mother. And Therese says that so beautifully. St. Bonaventure in the 1200s, um, doctor of the church, he wrote about this as well. And he said, Mary has surpassed the riches of the virgins, the confessors, the martyrs, the apostles, the prophets, the patriarchs, the angels. For sh the angels, you know, holy that he said she surpasses angels for she herself is the first fruit of the virgins, the mirror of confessors the rose of martyrs, the ruler of the apostles. We just heard about that in here. The oracle of the prophets, the daughter of the patriarchs, and the queen of angels. St. Louis de Montfort goes on and says, Mary has the authority over the angels and the blessed in heaven. As a reward for her great humility, God gave her the power and mission of assigning to saints the thrones made vacant by the apostate angels who fell away through pride. Such is the will of the Almighty God who exalts the humble, that the powers of heaven, earth, and hell, willingly or unwillingly, must obey the commands of the humble Virgin Mary. For God has made her queen of heaven and earth, leader of his armies, keeper of his treasure, dispenser of his graces, mediatrix on behalf of men. We heard how she prayed, you know, for the apostles and for the church and how she was a mediatrix, right? She is the destroyer of his enemies and the faithful associate in his great works and triumphs. And blessed Cardinal John Henry Newman said, no one has access to the Almighty as his mother had. None has merit such as hers. Her son will deny her nothing that she asks, and herein lies her power. While she defends the church, neither height nor depth, 
neither men nor evil spirits, neither great monarchs nor craft of man, nor popular violence can avail to harm us. For, a human, for human life is short, but Mary reigns above as a queen forever. Just really beautiful. And lastly, here before we get to the t some of the titles of Mary, I wanted a few things from the popes, right? Well, how did this happen? You know, people say, isn't that, you know, um, worshiping Mary, right? No, not at all. I mean, we love Mary because she's a perfect image of Jesus and because she takes and she draws us to Jesus. Does a queen grab all the attention for herself? No, she's there to... Um, aid the king to help him in his work, to support him, right? Um, and so there was a encyclical written by Pope Pius XII, um, and it was promulgated on October 11th, 1954, when he proclaimed the queenship of Mary in general, right? There's a few different quotes that I will read from. The first is where the Pope wrote, he is blessed, or maybe he's canonized now. I don't know. Um, from the earliest ages of the Catholic Church, a Christian people, whether in time of triumph or more especially in a time of crisis, has addressed prayers of petition and hymns of praise and veneration to the Queen of Heaven. Never has that hope wavered, which they placed in the mother of the divine king, Jesus Christ. Nor has that faith ever failed by which we are taught that Mary, the virgin mother of God, reigns with a mother's solicitude over the whole entire world, just as she is crowned in heavenly blessedness with the glory of a queen. So right there again, Pope Pius in 1954 talks about her having a motherly queenship, right? Therese of Lisieux talked about that too. And we see that in the mystical city of God. You know the truth of God being proclaimed in the tradition of the church when the Holy Spirit makes it appear in many different places all at once, right? So he goes on, in this matter, we do not wish to propose a new truth to be believed by Christians, since the title and the arguments on which Mary's queenly dignity is based have already been set clearly forth. So it's not like in 1954, he made up that Mary was queen, like a new teaching. When there's a teaching of the church like this, um, it always goes back to the very beginning of what Jesus taught, right? And he's going to show that. From the earliest times, Christians have believed, and not without reason, that she of whom was born the Son of the Most High received privileges of grace above all other beings created by God. And when Christians reflected upon the intimate connection that obtains between a mother and a son, they readily acknowledged the supreme royal dignity of the mother of God. So Jesus is king and she is queen as his mother. The theologians of the church deriving their teaching from these early church fathers and almost innumerable other testimonies handed down long ago have called the most blessed virgin the queen of all creatures, the queen of the world, the ruler of all. The supreme shepherds of the church have considered it their duty to promote by eulogy and exhortation the devotion of the Christian people to the heavenly mother and queen. But the Blessed Virgin Mary should be called queen, not only because of her divine motherhood, but also because God has willed her to have an exceptional role in the work of our eternal salvation. What more joyful, what sweeter thought can we have as our predecessor of happy memory, Pius XI wrote, than that Christ is our King, not only by natural right, but also by an acquired right, that which he won by the redemption. So Christ is our King because, you know, sometimes a king goes out and conquers an area and then he's their king, 
right? Maybe, you know, Texas wasn't part of the United States, but if there was a king in the United States, you know, the king of England, or it goes a queen, but um, went out and conquered Texas, and Texas, that would be their king then, right? Well, Jesus entered the garden that had been darkened by sin, and he won kingship over us. Through the act he did of fighting for us and conquering on the cross, in the Garden of Gethsemane, on Calvary. So it's something, he is our king by merit. It's not just like something nice we give him. It's actually like he won that, right? He purchased us. He conquered. Now in the accomplishing of his work of redemption, the Blessed Virgin Mary was most closely associated with Christ. That's why some have called her the co-redemptrix, right? It doesn't mean she's God, but she's so united powerfully with Jesus in his suffering. Look at those sorrows and look at her heart, right? That through that, she is queen and she's united in that work. There's a lot I speak about that with her union with him as the eternal high priest in that podcast on the priesthood that I did. It is so fitting to sing in the sacred liturgy, quote, Near the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, there stood sorrowful the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of Heaven and Queen of the World. Hence, as a devout disciple of St. Anselm wrote in the Middle Ages, quote, Just as God, by making all through his power, is Father and Lord of all, so the Blessed Mary, by repairing all through her merits in union with Christ, She's the only human that was perfectly united with Christ, right? She is mother and queen of all because she perfectly did the will of God always. As a human, but she did it. For God is the Lord of all things because of his command. He establishes each of them in its own nature. And Mary is the queen of all things because she restores each to its original dignity through the grace which she merited. Since we're convinced after long and serious reflection that great good will accrue to the church if this solidly established truth shines forth more clearly to all, like a luminous lamp raised aloft, by our apostolic authority we decree and establish the feast of Mary's queenship, which is to be celebrated every year in the whole world on the 31st of May. So that was before Vatican II. The 31st of May now is the visitation. And that's where we really see her queenship, like I said, um, beginning to manifest itself in service and going out, right? And carrying, being a tabernacle of Jesus. They moved it then to August 22nd because they didn't want to surpass that, that other feast. We likewise ordain that on the same day, the consecration of the human race to the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary be renewed. So they consecrated all of us back then. Cherishing the hope that through such consecration, a new era may begin, joyous in Christian peace and in the triumph of religion. In some countries of the world, there are people who are unjustly persecuted for professing their Christian faith and who are deprived of their divine and human rights to freedom. That's even more so in today's world, these countries where people are murdered for being Christian. Up until now, reasonable demands and repeated protests have availed nothing to remove these evils. May the powerful queen of creation, whose radiant glance banishes storms and tempests, and brings back cloudless skies. Look upon these her innocent and tormented children with eyes of mercy. May the virgin who is able to subdue violence beneath her foot grant to them that they may soon enjoy the rightful freedom to practice their religion openly, so that while serving the cause of the gospel, they may also contribute to the strength and progress of nations by their harmonious cooperation, by the practice of extraordinary virtues, which are a glowing example in the midst of bitter trials. 
Okay. And then in 1997, Pope John Paul II also spoke about the queenship of Mary. He was quoting from Lumen Gentium from Vatican II. And he said, popular devotion invokes Mary as a queen. The council, after recalling the assumption of the Blessed Virgin in body and soul into heavenly glory, explains that she was exalted by the Lord as queen over all things, that she might be the more fully conformed to her son, the Lord of lords and conqueror of sin and death. So he honored her greatly as queen. And it goes, you know, Vatican II, you know, um, really re-emphasized that promulgation that happened in the 50s. And one more too, citing Pope Pius IX's ineffable, ineffabilis Deus, his bull. It's hard for me to read Latin sometimes. The Supreme Pontiff highlights the maternal dimension of the Blessed Virgin's queenship, saying, having a motherly affection for us and being concerned for our salvation, she extends her care to the whole human race appointed by the Lord as queen of heaven and earth, raised above all the choirs of angels and the whole celestial hierarchy of saints, sitting at the right hand of her only son, our Lord Jesus Christ. She obtains with great certainty what she asks with her motherly prayers. She obtains what she seeks and it cannot be denied her. So like when we pray and we ask, you know, you think about the Hail Holy Queen, it's a very powerful prayer. We ask the intercession of Our Lady as Queen. You know, it, she has a maternal influence on Jesus in heaven. And, you know, she takes our prayers and she presents them to God the same way that she presented those apostles' prayer in that obstetrical, right? And the Father, you know, looks upon that and hands them to Jesus, who hands them back to her. And she's like the mediator between us. Think about right now any suffering that you have. If you, you know, have something that you really need from the heart of God. And give it to Our Lady as a queen right now. Give it to Our Lady. She will intercede, and her intercession has great power. I can't go through all the titles of Our Lady because I think there's like 15 pages of nothing but titles, right? We've got a little bit of time. But it's really beautiful to just honor her in this way. And so I will mention many of them, that maybe not all of them. I will mention them, and then we'll just say pray for us, right? And if you get bored with this kind of a prayer, that's okay. You can turn it off. <laughs> but it was on my heart to I honor her queenship this weekend by doing this podcast and honoring her titles, her many titles in the church. So we call upon Our Lady, who is Adam's deliverance. What does that mean? Adam sinned, right? And she, by her fiat surrender, in order to conceive Jesus in the Annunciation, that surrender and obedience, she delivered Adam and Eve from the prison of sin because she gave them a redeemer named Jesus. So pray for us. She's the advocate of Eve. Her mother was Eve, right? A long time ago. She advocated for she interceded for her. Pray for us. She's the advocate of all sinners, not just Eve, right? All of us. Pray for us. She is all chaste, all pure, perfectly immaculate, her heart. That's why I love that image of the Maria Bambina. Even as a baby, as a child, she was perfectly immaculate, all chaste. Pray for us, all fair and immaculate, pray for us, all good, pray for us. Who received the Annunciation by St. Gabriel, pray for us. Who's the aqueduct of grace, 
pray for us. Like I talked about being that mediatrix, right? She's the aqueduct of grace. She's the archetype of purity and innocence. Pray for us. She is the ark of God, gilded by the Holy Spirit. What is an ark? It holds and protects, right? You look at Noah's ark, and they hid inside the ark to be protected from the storm, right? And Jesus was placed in the womb of Mary, and she was the ark of Jesus. You know, the Ten Commandments, they built an ark in, in, in an imitation of what Noah, you know, built. And they kept those ten, those sacred commandments in the ark, right? In the temple. Well, Mary became the living ark because she had Jesus within her. So the ark gilded by the Holy Spirit, pray for us. The ark of the covenant, pray for us. These are all alphabetical, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> the assumption into heaven, right? She was assumed body and soul because she was already perfect. Pray for us. She's the great basilica, and we see that in the basilicas it named for her, right? But she was a great church. You know, what does a basilica do? It's a beautiful building in honor of God. That is Jesus Christ's Eucharistic presence as the center. Well, that's what she was, a living basilica. Pray for us. Blessed among all women, pray for us. Bridal chamber of the Lord, right? Pray for us. Bride of Christ. How was she mother and bride? I explained it on that podcast of the, um, the eternal high priest, right? It's something above and beyond sexuality. And St. Albert the Great wrote much about it. It's, you know, living, um, living a purity to a degree we don't know. It's an eternal perspective that makes her capable of being both mother and bride. The bride of heaven, pray for us. The bride of the Father, pray for us, right? The bride of the Holy Spirit, pray for us. The bride of the canticle, right? In the Song of Songs, we hear about the bride. That's Mary, pray for us. The cause of all of our joy. Why? Because Jesus is our joy, and she gave us Jesus. You can see it back there, that little baby Jesus and that icon, right? They're here. Pray for us chosen before all the ages god knew of her at the beginning of time pray for us comfort of all christians pray for us comforter of the afflicted pray for us conceived without original sin pray for us consoler of the afflicted pray for us court of the eternal king pray for us Created temple of the creator, pray for us. Crown of virginity, pray for us. Daughter of men, pray for us. David's daughter, pray for us. Deliverer from all wrath, pray for us. Deliverer of Christian nations, pray for us. Destroyer of heresies, why? Jesus is the truth that destroys heresy. And our lady, she gave us Jesus the truth. So she destroys all heresies. If she made the demons tremble like I read, then she crushes the head of Satan. She destroys heresy. Pray for us. The dispenser of grace. Pray for us. The dwelling place for God. Pray for us. The dwelling place meet, met, meant for God. Pray, pray for us. The dwelling place of the illimitable right? Of the omnipotent one, pray for us. The dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, pray for us. The earth unsown, pray for us. The earth untouched and virginal, pray for us. The eastern gate, pray for us. The espousal of the Virgin Mary, pray for us. Eve's tears redeeming. May, you know, Eve suffered in her sin. But that suffering had no meaning until Our Lady gave us Jesus who suffered. And she had tears that united with Jesus. And she, being our mother, united Eve's tears, right? She united everything. She united us all to his suffering so that we could, you know, kind of be a little image of her co-redemption, right? To make up what's lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Our Lady, who's ever green and fruitful, right? Always giving new life, pray for us. 
ever virgin pray for us exalted above the angels pray for us expectation of the blessed virgin mary the one who always expected great things from god right it's good to live in holy expectation pray for us our lady of sorrows pray for us the immaculate conception pray for us the fleece of heavenly rain what happened it was you know in the old testament when the prophet asked for a sign from god and he laid a fleece on the ground and it was covered in dew in the morning and it was a sign to him of god's presence and promise she is the the sign of god's presence and promise right so she is that fleece that the heavenly rain the heavenly dew came upon pray for us the flower of mount carmel pray for us the flower of jesse's root pray for us right you know all the way back in time where jesse was the father right that um you know gave forth that lineage that led to her right she's the great flower of his um his aunt you know is his the generations that came from him right his lineage formed without sin pray for us fourth bringer of god pray for us fourth bringer of the ancient of days pray for us fourth bringer of the tree of life pray for us fountain of living water pray for us fountain sealed that's from the song of songs pray for us free from every stain pray for us full of grace pray for us garden enclosed pray for us gate of heaven pray for us god's eden pray for us god's olive tree pray for us god's vessel pray for us handmaiden of the lord pray for us healing balm of integrity pray for us health of the sick pray for us helper of all in danger pray for us holy in soul and body pray for us holy mountain of our lady pray for us holy protection of the mother of god pray for us hope of christians pray for us house built by wisdom pray for us house of gold pray for us humility of the blessed virgin mary pray for us immaculate one pray for us immaculate conception pray for us immaculate heart of mary pray for us immaculate virgin and mother pray for us incorruptible wood of the ark pray for us inventrix of grace pray for us inviolate pray for us joseph's spouse pray for us king's mother pray for us the throne of the king pray for us lady most chaste pray for us lady most venerable pray for us lady of good help pray for us lady of grace and mercy pray for us lady of peace and perpetual help pray for us lady of sorrows and of the rosary pray for us lady of victory pray for us lamp unquenchable pray for us you can't put her out right and she blinds satan life giver to posterity pray for us light cloud of heavenly rain pray for us lily among all thorns pray for us living temple of the di deity pray for us loom of the incarnation a loom where you you know weave together something she was the loom of the incarnation pray for us madonna del Hilario, pray for us. Madonna of Gubino, pray for us. Madonna of the Miracles, pray for us. Madonna of St. Luke, pray for us. Marketplace for solitary exchange. There you go for business people, right? <laughs> pray for us. Mary of the Assumption, pray for us. Mary of the Hurons, Indians, right? Pray for us. Mary the Blessed Virgin, pray for us. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Mary, mediatrix of all graces, pray for us. Mary, co-redemptrix, pray for us. Mary, mother of God, pray for us. Mary, queen of Africa, pray for us. Mary, queen of the angels, pray for us. Mary, queen of peace, pray for us. Mary, star of the sea, pray for us. Mary, virgin mother of grace, pray for us. Mater Dei, pray for us. Maternity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, pray for us. Mediatrix and conciliatrix, pray for us. 
Mediatrix of graces and salvation and of the meteor, mediator, pray for us. So she mediates with the mediator being Jesus, right? Minister of life, pray for us. Mirror of justice, pray for us. More beautiful than beauty, pray for us. More glorious than paradise, pray for us. More gracious than grace, pray for us. More holy than the cherubim, seraphim, and entire angelic hosts, pray for us. Morning star, pray for us. Most holy name of Mary, pray for us. Most venerable, pray for us. Mother and virgin, pray for us. Mother and violet, pray for us. Mother most admirable, pray for us. Mother most amiable, pray for us. Mother most chaste and pure, pray for us. Mother of Christ's members, pray for us. Mother of Christians, pray for us. Mother of divine grace, pray for us. Mother of God, pray for us. Mother of good counsel, pray for us. Mother of Jesus Christ and of men, pray for us. Mother of our creator, pray for us. Mother of our head, pray for us. Mother of our savior, pray for us. Mother of our church, pray for us. Mother of the mystical body, pray for us. Mother of wisdom, pray for us. Mother undefiled, pray for us. May my body's healing, pray for us. My soul saving, pray for us. Mystical rose, pray for us. Nature's recreation, pray for us. Nature's restoration, pray for us. Neck of the mystical body. She, you know, we're the body and Jesus is the head, she's the neck, pray for us. Never fading wood, pray for us. New Eve, pray for us. Notre Dame of Paris, pray for us. Notre Dame of Chartres, pray for us. Notre Dame of Eston, pray for us. Notre Dame of South Bend, pray for us. Nurture of God and man, pray for us. Olive tree of the Father's compassion. Think about that. Olive tree of the Father's compassion, pray for us. Only bridge of God to man, Pray for us. Our Immaculate Queen, pray for us. Our Lady of America, pray for us. Our Lady Mediatrix of All Grace, pray for us. Our Lady of Alta Gracia, pray for us. Our Lady of Atalong, pray for us. Our Lady of Arabia, pray for us. Our Lady of ba Baring, pray for us. Our Lady of Bando, pray for us. Our Lady of Bandra, pray for us. Our Lady of Banax, pray for us. Our Lady of Begonia, pray for us. Our Lady of Bethlehem, pray for us. Our Lady of Calvary, pray for us. Our Lady of Charity and Consolation, pray for us. Our Lady of Copacabana, pray for us. Our Lady of Coromoto, pray for us. Our Lady of Covadonga, pray for us. Our Lady of Chestahava, pray for us. Our Lady of Europe, pray for us. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Our Lady of Gubino, pray for us. Our Lady of Good Counsel, pray for us. Our Lady of Good Help and Grace, pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe of Estramadura, pray for us. Our Lady of High Grace, pray for us. Our Lady of Hungary, pray for us. Our Lady of Japan, pray for us. Our Lady of Cavalier, pray for us. Our Lady of Latnac, pray for us. Our Lady of La Leche, right? That's to help those who are nursing, nursing moms, pray for us. Our Lady of Lavang, pray for us. Our Lady of Las Vegas, pray for us. Our Lady of La Salette, pray for us. Our Lady of Lebanon, pray for us. Our Lady of Lisse, pray for us. Our Lady of Limerick, pray for us. Our Lady of Loretto, pray for us. Our Lady of Lourdes, pray for us. Our Lady of Lujan, pray for us. Our Lady of Madhu, pray for us. Our Lady of Maria Zell, pray for us. Our Lady of Mercy, pray for us. Our Lady of Merit, Merit Xel, pray for us. Our Lady of Miracles, pray for us. Our Lady of Montserrat, pray for us. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, pray for us. Our Lady of Mount Carmel at Aylesford, pray for us. Our Lady of Nazareth, pray for us. Our Lady of Peace, pray for us. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, pray for us. Our Lady of Pilar, pray for us. Our Lady of Pompeii, pray for us. 
Our Lady of Pontamon, pray for us. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, pray for us. Our Lady of Providence, pray for us. Our Lady of Ransom, pray for us. Our Lady of Safe Travel, pray for us. Our Lady of St. Luke, pray for us. Our Lady of Salambayo, pray for us. Our Lady of Shongweni, pray for us. Our Lady of Sorrows and Tears, pray for us. Our Lady of All the Americas, pray for us. Our Lady of the Angels, pray for us. Our Lady of the Assumption, pray for us. Our Lady of the Cape, pray for us. Our Lady of the Conquest, pray for us. Our Lady of the Flight into Egypt, pray for us. Our Lady of the Golden Heart, pray for us. Our Lady of the Gulf, pray for us. Our Lady of all Hermits, pray for us. Our Ladies of the Highway, pray for us. Our Lady of the Holy Letter, pray for us. Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, pray for us. Our Lady of the Holy Souls in Purgatory, pray for us. Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, pray for us. Our Lady of the Incarnation, pray for us. Our Lady of Kodiak and the Islands, pray for us. Our Lady of the Milk and Happy Delivery, pray for us. Our Lady of Miracles, pray for us. Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, pray for us. Our Lady of the Most Blessed Sacrament, pray for us. Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. Our Lady of the Pillar of Saragossa, pray for us. Our Lady of the Pines, pray for us. Our Lady of the Prairie, pray for us. Our Lady of the Presentation, pray for us. Our Lady of the Rosary, pray for us. Our Lady of the Snows, pray for us. Our Lady of the Thorns, pray for us. Our Lady of Torumba, pray for us. Our Lady of the Valley, pray for us. Our Lady of the Wayside, pray for us. Our Lady of the Woods, pray for us. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Our Lady of Walsingham, pray for us. Our Lady of Washington, pray for us. Our Lady who appeared, pray for us. Our Lady Cause of Our Joy, pray for us. Our Lady Gate of Heaven, pray for us. Our Lady Help of Christians, pray for us. Our Lady Mother of the Church, pray for us. Our Lady Queen of All Saints, pray for us. Our Lady Queen of the Apostles, pray for us. Our Lady Refuge of Sinners, pray for us. Our Own Sweet Mother, pray for us. Paradise Fenced Against the Serpent, pray for us. Paradise of Innocence and Immortality, pray for us. Paradise of the second Adam, big Jesus, pray for us. Paradise planted by God, pray for us. Patronage of Our Lady, patroness and protectress, pray for us. Perfume of faith, pray for us. Presentation of Mary at the temple, pray for us. Preserve from all sin, pray for us. Protectress from all hurt, pray for us. Purification of Mary, pray for us. Purity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, pray for us. Queen of all saints, pray for us. Queen of all angels, pray for us. Queen of creation, pray for us. Queen of heaven, pray for us. Queen of confessors, pray for us. Queen of martyrs, pray for us. Queen of apostles, pray for us. Queen of virgins, pray for us. Queen of Nigeria, pray for us. Queen of peace, pray for us. Queen unconquered, pray for us. Queenship of Mary, pray for us. Refuge in time of danger, pray for us. Refuge of sinners, pray for us. Reparatrix, pray for us. Reparatrix of her parents, pray for us. Reparatrix of the whole world, pray for us. Rich in mercy, pray for us. Rose of her blooming, pray for us. Salve Regina, pray for us. Sanctuary of the Holy Spirit, pray for us. Scepter of Orthodoxy, pray for us. Seat of Wisdom, pray for us. Second Eve, pray for us. Singular Vessel of Devotion, pray for us. Sister and Mother, pray for us. Source of Virginity, pray for us. Spiritual Vessel, pray for us. Spotless Dove of Beauty, pray for us. Star of the Sea, pray for us. Star that bore the sea, pray for us. Suppliant for sinners, pray for us. Surpassing Eden's gardens, pray for us. Surpassing the heavens, pray for us. Surpassing the seraphim, which are the highest angels, pray for us. Sweet flowering and gracious mercy, pray for us. Tabernacle of God, pray for us. 
Tabernacle of the Word, pray for us. Temple Divine, pray for us. Temple Indestructible, pray for us. Temple of the Lord's Body, pray for us. Theotokos, pray for us. Throne of the King, pray for us. Tower of David, pray for us. Tower of Ivory, pray for us. Tower Unaccessible, pray for us. Treasure House of Life, pray for us. Treasure of Immortality, pray for us. Treasure of the World Undefiled, pray for us. Undefiled Treasure of Virginity, pray for us. Undug Well of Remission's Waters, <laughs> pray for us. Unlearned in the Ways of Eve, because Eve was disobedient, pray for us. Unplowed Field of Heaven's Bread, pray for us. Unwatered vineyard of immortality's wine, pray for us. Vessel of honor, pray for us. Victor over the serpent, pray for us. Virgin by the sea, pray for us. Virgin and violet, pray for us. Virgin most faithful, pray for us. Virgin most merciful, pray for us. Virgin most powerful, pray for us. Virgin most prudent, pray for us. Virgin most pure, pray for us. Virgin mother, pray for us. Virgin of Charity, pray for us. Virgin of Kappa Cabana, pray for us. Virgin of Sheshan, pray for us. Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Visitation of the v Blessed Virgin Mary, pray for us. Wedded to God, pray for us. Woman clothed with the sun, pray for us. Workshop of the Incarnation, pray for us. Hail, Holy Queen. Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious advocate, thy eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O holy Mother of God that we be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How can you not have an awesome day now that you meditated on every title of Mary? Kind of cool.